But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall scape a predestinate scratched face. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse, and for such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue. <laughs> but keep your way, in God's name, I am done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. the hell language was that? Uh, hi, everybody. This is Nick the Rat Radio. I am Nick the Rat, and we're in the sewers of Brooklyn, New York, with, uh, it's Wednesday night. It's 11-11, make a wish. August 25th, 2021. Skull to you, Servo. Cold acid net net. Hello, chat room. Hello, everybody on in the internet, on the sewers, um, on the no agenda stream, once again. We're having a, a fun time in the sewer tonight. There is once again no topic. We're going. We're going in uh, with without a topic. I know this pisses some people off. Throughout the week, millions of fans they always write me. Oh, Nick the Rat, what's the topic? I want to call and leave a voicemail. What's the topic? What's the topic? You know what? I, it's because of you people. It's because it's because of the few topic whores. We're going in this, uh, naked. Now I'm just joking. The topic tonight is the, the Freemasons. It always, it always goes back to them anyway. As you can see, uh, <clears throat> podcasting in the nude. S uh, speaking of podcasting, it, winging it, rattling rat tailing it, um, uh, Darren O'Neill is, uh, he has that show, Random Thoughts. And, and I was, I was watching, I was watching the news, and there was a guy that, that got kicked off of TV because, because of the stuff he said on a podcast called Random Podcast. Now, now the, it's random, but, uh, I guess this is not, like, an amazing new word that, that was, uh, created by Darren O'Neill. Maybe he stole it. Maybe he heard of the random podcast. Dumb is such a dumb word. It's a, it's a so I'm thinking Darren O'Neill might be that that guy from Jeopardy. <coughs> oh, pardon me. You know it's a professional podcast when the host just burps right into your ear. Uh it's not very professional. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm going. I'm seeing people. I'm trying to get this whole burping thing fixed. And Darren O would be a good Jeopardy host. He would. Speaking of other stupid words, Jeopardy is a stupid word. That's a Jeopardy. Jeopardy. That's not Jeopardy. I was trying, I was like, why is there an O in Jeopardy? Who, what is, is that like a, is that French or something or Dutch? Jo, Jopardy, Jopardy, Jopardy. Here's Alex Trebek, the host of Jopardy. What the fuck's that O doing there? Um, should be like J-E-P-H-O-R-D-Y. Boy, I'm high. Uh, what else has happened? There was a lot of things happening this week, right? Maybe this is why it, why Diane usually tells me I need to have a topic. She's like, because there's nothing. If you don't have a topic, there's no there's no direction to the show. Maybe this this. Uh, I understand. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. 
Okay, Diane. We'll do topics for people next week. <sighs> let's let's start the show with some music, okay? We got uh, we got music. We're gonna listen to that. We have news. We got uh, we got some stuff to talk about. There's other things to talk about, right, Diane? Please write it down for me and pass me that. Pass it. Like, no, mute them. Write it now. Yes. I don't know what to say. Okay. Um, let's listen to the first song of the evening. Diamond Ace with Kaleidoscopic. I need to go have a kaleidoscopic a little bit later this week. My proctologist called me. Welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio. Man, that song uh, does, as the kids are saying, slaps. It's how how she slap, how she slap through that diamond ace song. She be slapping. That was a that was a good one. Thank you, Diamond Ace, for releasing this music uh, for uh, for free to the people through the Creative Commons licensing. And it's very you know hard to find stuff that is uh, always Creative Commons or. Uh, uh, free to use, because even if you're just using something as part of your creation uh, or, or sharing it with people and, you know, uh, it's, you could sometimes get um, uh, copyright, copyright strikes and stuff. Yeah. I had, I actually had a copyright strike against me this week. That was the first, I usually get copyright notices, like, sometimes like, oh, you can't monetize this video because, uh, how? Because Jeff Bezos owns it or some shit. 
And I'm like, okay, whatever. Jeff Bezos could get the money for this video. I'm not doing these videos to make money or any of that. So, uh, but in episode 219, my background was, uh, um, it was like some cool drone footage or something. And, and the, the dude gave me a, 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 a strike and I was like, okay, well, well you know, whatever, fine. I'll just uh, delete that part of the video or I'll blur it out, but I couldn't do anything with it. I couldn't, I couldn't blur that part of the video out. So I, I, I contacted the, the, uh, the company. I was like, Hey, you know, if you, I can't do anything, uh, I'll get rid of that part. I wasn't even, I wasn't even doing it for, for, uh, for, for, for what it's, what I'll, I'll delete it out of the video. It's just, it's just something to look at other than, you know, my beautiful ears and stuff. He's like, no, I can't, I can't untake the copyright strikes. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I, I, uh, re I'm going to re-upload it later. I'm going to delete that whole part out. You know, it's very hard to uh, stay within the limits of uh, the law, especially when the the goalpost keeps moving. It's very, it's very difficult out there. But you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's um, some aerial photography landscapes guy. Uh, sorry that I used your video. I told you I would say sorry, and uh, it's okay if you don't undelete the copyright strike. I, it, it disappears in 80 days anyway. Um, oh, there's still water's here. What's going on, still water? Uh, I got that picture finally that you sent on Monday. Very cool. Uh, I, I was thinking about you recently. I saw a, a stupid story from St Sturgis that pissed me off about some of the people that were there. And I, I could understand some some of your uh, angst against them, but I'm sure not everybody there is complete asshole. But I'm sure a couple are. There's always going to be a couple of complete assholes out in the uh, reality. Hold on one second here. Sometimes you are the asshole. You know, you don't you never know when it's. Uh, sometimes you. Sometimes you're being asked on, and sometimes you live long enough to be the ass -er. But welcome to the sewer, Stillwater. Oh boy. I read the news today. I don't know how the do does it. Whose truth is the right truth? That's why I think <coughs> whenever you hear these uh, political ideologies, people start to grasp onto it because you can. You kind of need <coughs> people like groups to be going through this crazy reality. Alone is a scary thought. So when you hear that there's a group of people that have similar opinions to you, you're like, woohoo. And then, and then you start to learn more about more opinions that they have or opinions that they force on you. And um, th then you start to realize that uh, individualism, is <laughs> whatever fuck, fuck that is, I don't know. I'm sure there's a... There's probably a group of individuals out there. The oxymoronites. Good people. Um, but is it just the mass, un, uh, the mass unraveling? The great unraveling? Is, is this the reason why um, these, these groups are slowly eating themselves? Like, they're, they're, they're all just growing bigger and bigger. And... Maybe they're just growing louder and louder, though. I don't. I, it's. It's. I don't know if there's a people. Um. I don't know if the. The uh, the individual group is how big that group is because they're just a bunch of they're scattered. God damn it. They're, they're, oh well. But in the in the end of the day, most people are are pretty. Could be pretty mean. Like, there's a there's a group of people out there. They're called skeptics, and they always seem they always uh, whenever you hear like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a skeptic," it makes 
it's weird that that word has become associated with uh, wisdom or or knowledge, being skeptical of something, which it's it's uh, I understand questioning stuff is is a is a very very um a intelligent quality, but. But being skeptical, skeptical is like, isn't that like being, uh, asking questions, but expecting to already think that the answer is, is wrong? Like, if, if you're like, I believe the government exists, and then you say, I'm skeptical about that. Well, that means that you think that the government doesn't exist, and the other person's probably crazy. The, it, uh, I think the, the, the skeptics group, there's, there's a lot of people that are just mean in it. I think this, the group of questioners has got a lot of mean people in it sometimes. It's like, oh, I, I had this crazy experience. No, you didn't. I don't believe you. Like, you could just, you could just, you could just be like, you could just talk about it. Why do you have to be anything? Why do you, why, why do sides have to be drawn in this? <sighs> Let's listen to a, a voicemail. 917-719-59. Two, three, what is this? Was away from the phone or I would have reported you. What the hell is going on? So many people are sending me text me messages now. Wait, I, are these all voicemails? 917-719-5923. Hey, hello from Spearfish. Dude, remember, PMA. It's all about positive mental attitude. You got to stay positive, everybody. And, and Nick the Rat. I love that you're playing through Final Fantasy. I can't wait till you get to Final Fantasy IX. It's it's my favorite. Final <laughs> Fantasy VII is great too, of course. Uh, Final Fantasy VI also iconic. Uh, yeah, uh, it, let me know when you get to Final Fantasy II because that's a weird one where you gotta attack yourself just to level up. It's fucked up and weird. It's really? frustrating at first, but then you can exploit the fuck out of that and get super OP like really early on. It's hilarious. Anyway, everybody have a happy go fuck yourself. B -b 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 bye Pew pew. I'm a happy go fuck yourself too, sir. But I say that with love. Uh the first the first role playing JRPG game I bought was probably Final Fantasy VI. And uh then I was I was hooked after that. Then there was the Chrono Trigger. And then there's the Final Fantasy VII. And then Final Fantasy VIII I didn't beat because it got a little weird. Actually, I might have beat eight. I'm not too sure. And then nine, I played through most of nine. I think I got up to like the third disc. Then ten, I just kind of gave up. Um, Eleven, I gave up. Twelve. Thirteen. I gave up on those. Uh, Fourteen, I play still and uh 15 that's the moment all the dudes in the car right yeah i played through most of that game i didn't beat it either and now uh i'm getting i've got the the remastered pixel edition one through six so i'm playing through those uh in one i just got the airship and then i got this uh warp crystal i'm trying to figure i went to a, a waterfall i'm trying to figure out where to bring this warp, warp crystal but my team of spooky and ducky and servo have been have been great so far and servo hasn't died once White Mage OP. 917-719-5923. Uh, Actually, I should open up the phone lines, too. All right, the phone lines are open. If you want to call and talk about Final Fantasy or um, fishing, I don't know. Give me a call. Mm -hmm. Hey, Nick. Um, first and foremost, wow. I got to say thank you. And thank Mystery Man for that amazing Bigfoot slaying story. Holy shit. I must have came six times. That's like half a dozen, man. That's a lot that of That was times. amazing. I didn't use tissue. I used a whole damn sheet of newspaper. And newspapers are rare these days. And, yeah. Uh, I gotta go clean up. I love you guys. Send more stories. 
Oh, oh, my knees are weak. Oh. You might want to go see a doctor. Uh, yeah, I think there's another Bigfoot assault story this week. Mystery Man is a he's 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 contractually obligated to oblige the contract of in servitude, but there's an NDA, so he can't talk about it. But he's uh, been sending more stuff lately. But I think I think he hasn't been putting too much. Diane, can you can you actually leave a message for Mystery Man and tell him he's got a he's got to kick it up a little bit more? I'm just like it's almost good. The right, the writing, yeah, okay. Um, oh yeah, when Enix, well, Enix made like one game, like one RPG before they uh, crossbred with Square. I don't know why they did. There was that must have been a lot of money for certain people. Or I wonder what the. I guess Square wanted more money, but Square had it all. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's lore between why those two companies merged. But Squaresoft was... That was like a chunk, a, ch a good chunk of my childhood. Yeah, but there was a... Brain Lord. I'll have to check that out. Okay, I'll see what I'll have to say. I wasn't an Enix fanboy. I was the Squaresoft fanboy. 917 Hey, Nick. Nick the Rat. It's Cold Acid. Hey, Cold. Uh, what do you know about Joe Biden being a Wendigo? There, there's, it seems that, it seems that, uh, it seems that Joe Biden is a Wendigo. And with what I know about Wendigos, with them running through the snow and eating people, uh, what, what do you think this means for America? That they, that they've elected a Wendigo a uh, evil, an evil person eating spirit from uh, Algonquin lore as the president. Uh, is this is, this, this is, is like a... some serious shit. Like Wendigos are like serious business, Nick. Something needs to be done. Like America cannot be run by Wendigos or everybody's going to get eaten. I, I hope you have, I hope you have some, uh, some ideas on on what can be done I about do. this. I do have. I do. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, there might be Wendigos in my neighborhood. Yeah. Bye. You'll know when to go. As soon as they come. When they come, that's when to go. Um, I think it's great that America has been run by a Wendigo. It's um, it's a sign of power. You you know you flash your you you put your your prized mythical creature as the leader of your nation. That just shows how inclusive we could be as a society. It shows that there's evolution occurring within the political fields of uh, reality. Uh, if imagine if we just stuck to the humanoid creatures all the time as leaders. That's just we have to give all these creatures a chance. I think. Now, I don't think we have to worry about Wendigos running the country too long, because I think a, a Baba Yaga is coming right up after that. Anyway, let's 917-719-5923. Uh, you could call and talk about Wendigos. Really? Diane, can we do that? Can we? All right, you cannot talk about Wendigos. We just got, a, we just got an alert. I saw the red phone blinking. 917 719-719-5923. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. What is love? What is love? <laughs> don't hurt me. No more. Well now. Let's uh, let's uh, brainwash that out of our heads and listen to some Baradine with "Don't Be Afraid," but baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more, don't be afraid no more. Uh.
Um, all this music can be heard uh, on SoundCloud slash NickTheRat slash likes or something. All the links are on NickTheRat.com, NickTheRatRadio.com. You go there, and there's links. There's uh, when you go there. I, I every song you hear is CC BY 3.0. That means you could use it for free anywhere you want. And uh, it's on SoundCloud, so go go there. If any part of the show you should enjoy, it should be the music. So, the studio is getting trippy. I don't know what's going on. Um. You can also donate on the website as well. If you would like to participate in joining the sewer chat, you could do so freely or you could do so uh, pay, paidly. It's up to you. Just a sign of appreciation to the host. Uh, tip your witcher, as they would say. Let's uh, check donations this week. I did get... I was supposed to do something for a gene witch last week. I, I think he... I think he dropped a, a a big old $25 million donation into the sewer last week, but he wanted me to, like, send him foot feet pictures, I think. Is it true? I'm sorry if I'm blowing up his spot. Well, thank you for the subscription, Chris Corkum. Uh, on YouTube, that was. I don't, I don't say people's names in the donations. Ow! From the donation segments, I will read your uh, your donation donation words, and if you, uh, I'll read your um, initials as well. Your initials. I don't want to um, dox people. But but yeah, okay, yeah. This is. I think that was. I think Gene wished threw me uh, twenty five gigantic ones last week. But I'll send you the fic the the feet pic pictures later, or you can just tell me later what what it was that you wanted. And um, thank you so much for that, Gene. And also thank you for all the information you provide to the the drip drip sewers. We got um LCI with a four twenty subscription. Thank you so much, LCI, for your uh, continued support of the sewer system. And it, where you gotta get money from somewhere, and I mean you gotta, and I mean a. Uh, you, you need to get water from somewhere, and the sewer system is a good place. To oh, we have, a, we have an MA with a 420 subscription. Oh. I think MA might be a wolf. Uh, we have a... Oh, from JF, a 669. Thank you so much there, uh, JF. Uh, I might be going on to Hog Story um, on September 9th, I think. I was invited down there. They're flying me in. They're actually going to fly me to Canada and Texas. It's going to be... I'm going to be on the... I'm going to be doing the radio show while I'm on the airplane with them. It's going to be an interesting thing. But I'm going to I'm gonna go uh, hang, out, hang out with them guys. Cheers to you, JF. Thank you so much. Uh, what is this? MAC? 420? MAC. Thank you so... Uh, thank you, MAC. I think MAC is uh, new in the sewer. And I usually talk bad about Apple and Macintosh products, but in, in this case, I, I love a Mac. Thank you. Uh, KS with a 420 subscription. Thank you so much, KS. Yeah, I think the 420 subscription, Diane, that's, that equals like a dollar a week, right? Like a dollar an episode? Something like that. Um, and then finally, we have a P.O. Box. 90, I was it 9549, Brooklyn, New York, 11209. It's on my website under the social link. You could also chat. There's a chat room. You can come in and chat to everybody. There's it's a decent group. Sometimes they get out of hand and they have to get the boot, but sometimes I have to boot myself. Sometimes I get out of hand. Rats are squirmy, right? Uh let me check the Twitch. Some, you could also donate on Twitch. If you have a Amazon Prime, you could give me a free like two dollars or something. 
If you just um, give me that sub there. Oh, it looks like looks like I got a couple new follows. I got a Haas and a Haas. A Haas 311 and a Haas 312. I'm guessing those are bots from China. Welcome to the, the sewer, China. And it, we did get a P.O. Box thing here. It looks like there's a... Um, a check. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to dox the person here. So, well, actually, you probably can't read this anyway. But it's a. It's an envelope. I don't think there's powder in it. So let's open this up here. This is not the cool sounding envelope. This is the. This is the sticky, sticky one. Jeez. I need a. I need a letter opener here. The check is in the mail. Account 666. This is from the the devil. What, what the... Mystery total. 42 cents. More coming. <laughs> um, this is actually pretty hysterical. I think my, I think my doctor is, is billing me or I don't know, something. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for all the donations. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it tickles my tail that people do uh, even listen, and it makes me even happier that they do support me. And, and to show you uh, how much I think that you guys matter to me, uh, nothing, nothing I like to do more than after, after we have a nice little donation segment and, and we get, we bond, I like to, I like to tell you to go buy stuff from companies. I like to be the person to let you know what you should be spending your money on. Is that right, Diane? That's what they Not blankets, money. Yeah, we, we want your uh, cash to be used on these products. They're 100% uh, safe. At least that's what some um umpire said. <laughs> okay, let's listen to some advertising. We'll be right back with more Nick the Rat Radio. Um, thank you for supporting us. And the more you support us, the less advertisements off to play. Is this from that earbud one? What is this? Emails, traffic, bills. Are you in the fast lane and ready for some chicken and chew? New from Casa Del Waffle, it's chicken nugget juice. Now without Prozolam. Your favorite chicken-based beverage is back, and now with more cranked-up chicken and tuned-down benzodiazepines. We partner with scientists from Pro-Life Labs, especially formerly our most relaxing is drink yet. Get your chicken and chill only at Casa Del Waffle. Get clocked. They said it's an antique. Mass and Gil just came out with a brand new cleansing design. So? I used it after my period. That's the test. And? You feel a lot fresher. New Mass and Gil. Because it's your body. That's why. Oh, gee, I don't think we're doing business with Mass and Gil. Okay, let's listen to Electronic Senses with a Strong Desire.
a strong desire. The first story we got here, this, is, this one's going to be a fun one. It's from BBC. Madagascar on the brink of climate change-induced famine. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's on the brink of climate change-induced famine. Madagascar is on the brink of experiencing the world's first year. Okay. Oh, God. Look. Let me read this to you, and then, and then I want you to just, I want you to think. I want you to sit there and, and turn your brain on and tell me what's wrong with this. I'm going to read the first sentence of this, this paragraph, and then I'm going to read you the first sentence of the second paragraph, all right? And then, and then turn your brain on. Madagascar is on the brink of experiencing the world's first quote-unquote climate change famine according to the United Nations, which said tens of thousands of people are already suffering from cash. Okay, whatever. All right, let's go to the second paragraph. The drought, the worst in four decades. All right, there you go. That's all you need to know. That means uh, four decades ago, there was a drought that was just as bad as this one or even worse or some shit. And then they're saying that the one we're having today is the world's first. Oh, fucking God. Who, who, who are these scientists? I don't think that's who what the memes are do. What's wrong Let's with you? See. Oh, and then they start talking about eating insects and water management and, and people fucking mowing sand for food and stuff. They're, they're, these pictures they're showing are horrible. The, the picture, they got, they got, uh, they got tiny twig people pushing around tiny twig fucking cows to mill the land. It, 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 oh, God. Somebody should go there and help these people out. I, I I don't know if it's really climate change fucking them over. I think it's more about just fucking being poor. Poor and maybe their their land sucks. Their land might have been raped or something. I don't, I don't know what happened with them exactly. Why is Madagascar so poor? Let's look up. Let's look up Madagascar. Really, Zindu? You can do your Why research? Why are you so poor? Madagascar. It's not news. Let's see here. The majority of people in Madagascar live in extreme poverty. Currently, 75% of the population of Madagascar live on less than $2 a day. This means that three-fourths of the 25.6 million inhabitants of Madagascar 
live beneath the international poverty line. Holy shit, that's... There's that many people living there. It's 25.6 and 75% of that amount of people only have $2 a day to live on. Now, that, that right there. Now, that's man-made climate change. When you only got $2 a day, and that's like most of the people, that, that would, I would say that's, that's man-made climate change. I wouldn't say uh, it being hot out. And shit is the cl- okay. Either way, okay. Let's, let's go on to the next uh, article. Cindy that was just weed depressing. Again? Let's see what we got. Here. <laughs> They're really big uh, dollars. Uh, <laughs> like oh, the yeah, baby. Oh, Diane, get out of here. Jeez, I'm trying to do the news. Wait, what? Uh, what is this one here? Grand Canyon's gap in time: a legacy of continental breakout. What is this here? It's if ifilscience.com. More than a billion years of geological history is missing from parts of the Grand Canyon, and some global uh, geologist <laughs> globalist uh, believe much of uh, much of the rest of the world. Some geologists believe much of the rest of the world. What? A new investigation of this mysterious gap in time, which has puzzled geologists for 152 years, attributes to the breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia 700 million years ago. Rodinia, huh? What is this shit? I don't think I've read about Rodinia. Rodinia from the Russian Rodit to give birth. Uh, let's see, the motherland was a neoproterozoic supercontinent that assembled. <laughs> Jeez. The things that your scientist on this planet claim to know is. Is pretty fucking cool. It's 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 very cool, but also, can can you really trust it? F- fucking a billion years ago, y- you have evidence that a billion years ago, this happened. Did you have scientists doing math? Like you found a shell, you found a shell in Rhode Island that actually came from China, and it was like under fifty layers of dirt. So you're like, oh fuck, this is, this is fucking a billion years old over here. Something I don't like know. That. Uh, Interesting. Okay, yeah, so uh, what, what are they talking about? There's, there's, there's missing land? Maybe there's a gap in the fucking, in the history because you don't know shit, you silly humans. Maybe, or maybe, you know, aliens came and swiped it up. <coughs> Let's just skip this article here. Just how much time is missing in the unconformity varies. But near Lake Mead Rocks, 520 million years old, sits directly on top of stone 1.4 to 1.8 billion years old. What? There's more than a billion years that's gone. How did, what the fuck? Where are they pulling these numbers out of? Let me go, let me click this here. Uh, Jaws is digging the Grand Canyon's mysterious gap in time, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure there's some science in there somewhere, but, you know. Cindy, you got to read the article. Go read, the- go read it and look for mysterious missing time in the Grand Canyon's gap. Uh, I'm just going to blame that on ignorance of your quote-unquote scientist. I blame it on your Let's ignorance, here. Zindu. Read the article. Oh, man. I'm gassy. I'm and then gassy do the today, news. Guys. Don't. You just gotta forgive me. Oh, wait, wait. Do we have any more any more news? Yeah, it looks like we got one more story over here. We're gonna go over. Uh, let's see. Come on, no, stop, stop it, you motherfucker! I'm gonna beat this shit out. Okay. Uh, New York Post: Reverse zoos locks visitors in cages for lying viewing pleasure. Yeah, you heard me correct. This is crazy. Lion Sanctuary, GG, Conservation in Harrismith, South Africa. So in South Africa, you could get, it's kind of like uh, going into a, uh, what's that called? Like in the shark tank, you go into the shark tank and then sharks come. What, what, what's wrong with people? Like, why do you want to get so close to these killer animals? Like, oh, I got close to a fucking lion. I was in a cage and he came up to the cage. Uh, and then I took a picture and I looked at it on my phone and uh, I don't fucking know what the right it was. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You know what? <sighs> Ew. And like the lines are shitting and pissing on the cage. How do you even get to the cage, though? We have to go there like with a, with a guy with a gun and if the lion comes over, they just kill it? Like, how do you get into the cage? Or is there like a lion in the cage and then they put you in a cage and they let the lion out of the cage? There's so many questions that I have and... I'm sure if I actually cared about this shit, I'd read the article. Um, you know what? You know what? 
I'm not reading that shit. Anyway, I'm out of here. Uh, I'll be back a little bit later with more Dark Sewer News Network. I hope you have been enjoying. My name is Zindu, and all I can tell you is that the only thing worse than being a weatherman is being a newsman. It's even more bullshit. All right, okay, we'll be back. Bye. Oh. Maybe the lions have currency. They got like a lion coin, lioness coin or some shit. Zindu, you have to read the article, then make it the news story, then send that in. You can't partially read the news article as the the news. That's 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 it's like having a a podcast with no topic. Hey, well, like this, th th there's been a lot of work going on in the sewer. You know, there's a there's that Labor Day coming up. It's like thing when America gives birth. I don't know. America's like a stripper or something somewhere on weed. I had. It's, it's not. That's not the point. The point is that there's going to be a lot of sales that day. And 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 I fell down the rabbit hole of looking at beds. I went way down. I went way down deep into that whole uh, bed hole because you know there's going to be a lot of sales going on. Because America's given birth. It's probably a brand new mayonnaise brand or something. And I think I came out of this whole experience of looking at uh, uh, beds and mattresses as, as an enlightened uh, Buddhist Zen consumer. Trying, trying to figure out how to buy a bed makes you realize that you have zero control over anything you do in life. Basically, you don't even know if your doctor is trying to kill you. This is, this is what buying, trying, trying to buy a bed has, has done to me. There's, there's a bunch of products, and they're all shit for their own reason. There's, they're, they're all, they all got some issue or other, but nobody that is making the product will tell you what, what, what the shit part is. They just make up cute names like firmness or, or fucking softness and density and, and springs and air and rubber and plastic and latex and, and whips and masks and. Uh, and then you start to look for reviews of these things and, and there's there's just all these these people that get all these beds from all these companies and they just like they're, they're, this bed it's a good it's this is a bed I laid on it and you know it, it also I'm going to compare it to that bed as I've, I tried that one too that bed over there I tried it I laid on it and they're getting paid to say all this stuff. They know the real problem. There's like a hidden, there's hidden agendas in all of it. And they're so expensive. They're, they're, there's like hidden information. You don't know who is trying to sell you cat shit or who actually has the, the, the good acid, man. You know what I'm trying to say? And you can't go by any reviews, no reviews. And this is probably true of uh, as true as doctors and everything. You can't go by any any reviews, really. Most of them are made up and bought off and sold. It's you ha you have to find the 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 one or two kind of truthful people that are in there. But even those one or two kind of truthful people will hide the the real nuggets of truth because if you just flat out told people what was actually good and bad with the product, you know, very well explaining explanatory way, you'd probably, you'd probably get burned for being a witch. That motherfucker's a witch. They're telling, they're telling the truth to the people. Burn him. Quick, get, get that guy. He's ruining all of our fun. 
all of the fun has been ruined because of that one person. Now, who wants to be that one person? It's Now, how do you find that one person? Because you never know if that one person is lying to you. Trying to buy a bet is the worst. But I could tell you, I could tell you the, where, I, where I landed and for what reason, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. If you want to, it'll, there's, a, there's a newsletter. If you want to find out more about that, just go, send an email to nick at nicktherat.com and um, write, what is the best bed for me? We'll work on a price. But I did a lot of research in this area, and I know exactly what you need in it. So... Let's listen to these, the um, next song over here. We got Alex MMC with Fields of Art. <laughs> Like crap, it's midnight in the sewer. Actually, it's later than midnight in the sewer right now. I'm sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't announce that. Whoa, what's going on? What, what the hell? All right, buddy. It's midnight in the sewer. We're having a good time. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all the um, night owls, night rats, the sewer creature, the, the necrophiliacs. What is it called when you stay up at late at night? It's not a necrophilia. That's... Uh, uh, um, night, 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 uh, night lover. What? There's a word for it. It's, I think there's necro in, no, necro is death. And, uh, what is, what is like a, the love of night? I don't, I don't know what that would be called. I don't, um, 
<clears throat> Retaliator? All right, okay. I feel, I feel, I feel evil. I did so much research. I guess I should just, ah, just tell you what I. I could, I, I guess I should give you my bed, my mattress shopping, condensed view. Uh, I don't, I don't like, I don't like springs because they make noise when I'm having uh, wild monkey sex. I gotta rule that out right there. So I need, I need the foam, and then, uh, but. I was like, well, all foam is created equal. Just give me like a 10 inch slab with that shit. But it, it, not all foam is created equal. You want, you want at least a couple of slabs in there. And um, I guess you want it from America. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of people that review bomb Chinese mattresses saying that there's a uh, fiberglass in it. They're like there's, oh, there's less standards in China, but they're, you know, they're, it's probably like some kid getting weird cancers from pumping out beds from a pipe because it's shooting chemicals into the air. Probably making them in the in their house and cutting them like a machete. Maybe. Who knows? They're probably doing that in America, too. So I was like, you know, I, I, I'm going to buy a, a nyctophilia. Nyctophilia? There's a, there's a word for like a night owl. Um, insomniacs? No, it's not insomniac. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I, my only, my only stipulations were it's got, it's got, um, I want like a, a U.S. brand, because, you know, I'm living in, in the USA, so I was like, mm. you know, woohoo, or something, go team go, you made that bed. Um, and then I was like, it's gotta be like 10 inches, because yeah, that's kind of what I need. And I was like looking at all these beds and like, oh, it's like a thousand dollars for like a, you know, I need the, I need the California King, you know, because I guess you got, do you guys know what a rat king is? That's when like a whole bunch of tails get tangled together. Well, while you're doing that, you want to be on like the biggest thing they got, right? Okay. I need at least 10 inches, baby. Oh, Gene, thank you for, from the other thing, the other thing, but um, either way. Then there's there, the cheaper one. You get like you get like the same thing from China that they make here for about like two hundred dollars compared to like eight hundred to a thousand dollars. And and I was doing all this research, and this, that's why I went on that whole last rant last because last night that whole research thing that I went down. But but then I was like, wait, what bed do I have now? And I looked, and it was um I forget the name of it. I I, I have to find. I, once I find the name, I'll sell you the name. I'll let you know in the newsletter, but, um, but I already had a, one of the cheapest mattresses that are made in America. And I had it for like, I had it for like 50,000 years. That thing is never, it's never dis dis disappearing anywhere. It was called like sleep deprivation, uh, foam or something. Hold on. I could find, actually, I should look it up right now because, um, I'm probably going to buy another one that's just bigger of the same thing. It's a little bit newer, a little bit thicker, and a little bit bigger. And I was like, it's gonna be, it's, uh, hold on, what, what's the name of this guy? Burp. No, it's not, Ca Casper is very expensive. And purple is very expensive. And they've bought all the reviewers. See, the funny thing is, the bed that I have now is made in America. It's foam, it's at least 10 inches, and I had it for a long time. And it was cheap as shit, and I got it from Amazon. And, um, yeah, it might have stunk for like a day because, you know, it's just chemical foams and all that shit. But the, when I was doing research for beds, I forgot what bed I had. That one never came up as one of the picks. It was never like, oh, this is a good bed. So they haven't bought off any of the reviewers. The only reviewers that actually talked about it were like um, when you see like homeless people in the street and they got like their camera and they're like, oh, I bought this mattress and it was good. That's like the only reviews they have for this bed, but, but it's actually good because I did, I already had one. Hold on one second. It's, it's right here. It's gotta be right here. Um, hold on. Where'd it go? There it is. Sleep Innovations. There you go. Look up that. If you want a, a, a cheap crack mattress, Sleep Innovations is what I've decided upon as just being a foam bed. Hmm. 
So that one, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's on, that's gonna be in the newsletter. You can buy that information, or you could spend like four times as much and get a another slab of foam. <laughs> I got me expensive foam. Oh, also my keyboard, too. See, Diane, we need a topic. I'm just talking about garbage that's been breaking in the sewer. Um, maybe I'll tell you about my keyboard a little bit later. But uh, let's let's listen to... We got some weird stuff to listen to. Is the phone line working? I don't think the phone line's working here. 917-719-5923, is this... Hey, Nick, it's your doctor. We're just having a good time. You know, another deer here and there. Yeah, it's picking and garbling my garden. So I'm going to tell you incognito what I'm going to tell you about the whole garden secret situation. So now that I'm looking over at the deer that I have to hide corpus, uh, I mean, take the corpse, hide, and save the skin, the hide of the deer is very important at this point because if you don't take care of it, it'll just get dirty and you'll have to wash it. You don't want to deal with the digital digital rot from the uh, uh, hide, the corpse, the flesh, the fur, the skin of the deer. You don't want to deal with hiding the hide, the gigabytes are very cheap these days, and you can back up almost everything you have. And most importantly, the hide of the deer is coming out in front of us because I need to take care of the hide, the deer, and the other information to deal with processing a deer because we're going to hide the deer that doesn't deal with the hide that we're stripping off of it because I think I've given you enough gigabytes or cheap hints that I cannot say it directly, but if you would make a copy because of the deer, we're looking at the deer's corpse, but I have it strung up in a gambrel, draining out the blood, and now I'm going to hide the data that I'm pulling from the uh, U.S. Hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. A lot of people head out to the national parks or the mountains to enjoy a weekend of camping, but there are an awful lot of local hidden gems in the industrial areas, like a thin strip of trees between this warehouse and the railway tracks. So that's what we're gonna slip into tonight. We have made adequate arrangements with security to prevent anybody who does not have a vaccination card from accessing any of these events. Also, you will not be allowed to access banking services in Edo State from the middle of September if you have not been vaccinated. If you want to undertake banking services, you will do so remotely. You like this one? This one is, uh, I don't like this one. Hollow sounding? I mean, look at its case. <laughs> it's pretty big.
which we are legally obligated to, to, to give them. And if we are legally obligated to give this amount of sick days and this group of people is more likely to take those paid sick days, then can we charge them? Can we pay them less? Can we lower their salary or not give them raises as a result of that costing us money? The same way that the cigarette smoker that walks outside every 20 minutes to get their fix is less likely to get a raise here because they spend their time outside the store, the store door smoking rather than inside the store fixing things and learning how to fix things so that they can better themselves in the craft. And then it also begs the question of do we spread this to everything else? Is there going to be a fat surcharge? Is there going to be a sugary surcharge? I know people that are damn near close to being diabetic that also have absolutely no problem ingesting an additional 100 grams of sugar in really hyper-sugary tea. It affects their mood. It affects their uh, their ability to work quickly. Not at this company, but I know them in other companies. Does the business owner there charge them a surcharge for their health? At what point... Is a surcharge legal or illegal? At what point is a surcharge based on health, discrimination, or just normal? And are we going to start applying this to other areas other than COVID? Because there are many things that are going to slow someone down. If you work at a shipping company, if you work at a company where you got to move things back and forth all day and carry things, if someone is obese and they are likely to get tired more often because they are not in as good cardio shape, do you charge them a surcharge? Jay. David Lynch was in the Boy Scouts. What was the highest level of scouting he achieved? No. Oh, four? <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Can I, can I steal? Yeah. I'm going to guess um, uh, uh, the highest level of scout. Which, which is? Would be, uh, which would be Eagle Scout. Correct. Oh, my God. I'm beating that. Jay. I'm beating Jay. And, uh, I didn't even know he was in the Boy Scouts. I thought you were talking about the last Boy Scout no. with uh, Bruce Willis. <laughs> Wow. Did, wow! That movie. I was like, he was in that movie, and I was so you know that was called no. the Last Boy Scout. So, but he was an actual Boy Scout. He was. So he was an Eagle Scout. I, I figured a, a man who has a career as as a filmmaker, you know, has commitment, right? Mm-hmm. And so he would make it to the level of Eagle Scout. I'm using deduction here and logic. I think we should redefine a lot of terms because it's easy to be misunderstood and have your words mischaracterized when we don't agree on what words mean. And I think the first word we should define and agree on its definition is the word racism. And I would like to ask, how, what is the definition of racism in a system of debt slavery? Leave your answers here and we'll discuss. So I'm surprised no one's been asking, but people want to know more details of how how Trevor died. I guess Sam will get into it. Right? Yeah. Um, you want to go first? Uh, I mean, it, it's tough. Uh, we've been talking about this. Uh, you know, it's kind of like we all know the name of the stream and everything like that. But uh, Trevor had been. I mean, it was a mission of his life. Yeah. That, right. that, and he yes. He was attempting to suck his own dick, yeah. and he'd been. You told me this. I didn't know about this, but he I mean, would, well, he, he was, was going to go to Mexico to have a rib removed, but I guess he couldn't wait. And, and uh, the good news is, the coroner said that he the cause of death was actually that he asphyxiated on his own jizz. So right. he he pulled it off. You know, he, oh, he got did it. He he got there. Guys. And there was a moment where uh, they said he died with a smile on his face. So, you know, uh, and technically it was Saturday morning, so it was a self-suck Saturday. So, so think about it. someone in chat said he came and went. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, who said that? Wow. Oh, All the t-shirt God. press, I got to I not only agreed with her, but thrilled at her passion, values, and desire for social justice. Shut up. Shut up. You're a liar. You're lying to everyone, Matt Damon. And you know it. You know you're lying. Is that yours? Oh, yeah, but we don't know how to do it. Oh, you need some help? Yeah, this is our stuff. This is yours? Yes. No, it is. This is all ours. 
Uh, all of it. The chairs, the bag, this is all our stuff. My kids, yep, that's my kids. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. We'll let it slide, but I'm glad I, I made it in time. I'm telling you. No. You, you, there's... No, you, no, step away from my shit. How about that? Step back. Stop it. <laughs> Seriously. What is President Biden prepared to do to push the Chinese on the Wuhan lab? Uh, investigation. Uh, there's been reporting that the, the, the Chinese are not being cooperative. They're, they're they're pushing back at the U.S. on that. What is he prepared to do to, to free up more information on that? Well, I think it's well known they haven't been cooperative, right? Through your reporting, other reporting, and just the fact that they obviously have not in a in a publicly available way provided the data and the information that we have been requesting. Uh, in terms of an assessment of what steps we might take, I don't have anything to preview for you on that front. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Uh, I know you don't want to get into the details of the COVID uh, origins report assessment. Yeah. Um, I, I will be happy to when there is an unclassified summary for all of you. Right. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hey, parrot. That sounds real. <laughs> that would be Iago from Aladdin. Bring me the dark wizard from the front porch and make it snappy. I need to learn some new spells. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I can't go to my second car. My daughter has to get in. We won't move his car. I, my daughter has to get in. Move it. You parked it too fucking close. You, you. Yeah, you, 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 you do heard you, me. Do you, when you open that door, you get my Does she do this a lot? Car. Is she okay? No, she's fine. The car is parked too close to her car. Do you see your tire? You Let's get serious. Let's see get see serious. Tire. You see the line that you separates these? Tire. Now come over here. Come over here. Come on. This is just for fun. This is just for fun. No, come here, look. Just for fun, look. And then look at this. You're, you need to stay within the lines. But look, look, I'm perfectly between the lines. Look, oh, I'm actually hugging this side a little too much. Yeah. But it's that's loca. Fuck you. Oh. Fuck you. En español, por favor. Don't call women crazy, fucker. You're crazy. Look, you little shit. You fucking old bitch. Driving a car like that, asshole. You're not happy, man. I'm. You're an old fart. I am. You're too old to be driving a car like that. It's too I'm, big for you. I'm in disbelief. Picker. Yeah, I bet you are. Look <laughs> and you drive like this. You drive like it, you little tiny pecker. So you original. need that. That's your, that is your dick, isn't it? No. You're proud of your old fucking dick, but it's your car, that you. Yeah, I can't get it up. Viagra, my ass. You stupid shit. Now you're getting off fighting with a woman? No, I'm, I'm not you're fighting. You're getting off fighting with a woman, you I'm, little pecker? I'm not fighting son at all. Son of a bitch. Go on, man, because I'll take you down, you son of a bitch, anytime. I, that's, that's threatening, but it's not. It's, I'm just being in pain. I'm in disbelief. No, no, it's okay. She said I parked too close to her car. And, uh... Let's listen to Akira with 80s Overdrive.
<laughs> Mr. The Rat? What? Hello? So I've got some input and the experiences on the uh, mattress front. Can you, uh... I think it would benefit your listeners. Can you, uh, hold on to... Can you hold on to that? Just for Absolutely. I right, just hold on to that. We'll be right back. I'm holding my cock. Oh, oh God. Oh, come on, caller. Let's get back right into your uh, genitalia over here. All right. It, Listening to myself breathe. Now, are you wearing you pants? Wanna, you want to hear it? Are, are you wearing pants, caller? Uh, boxers, but my uh, my scrubs, my whole outfit's ready to go by the door. Wait, you got scrubs? You're you're wait, you're a doctor. You're my doctor. I don't know what you're talking about. No, not medical advice. Should I keep taking my pills, though? You you, you gave me those penis-shaped gummy pills. You said it was modeled uh, after your own? Uh, uh, those are multivitamins. They were very... They were like Tic Tacs. Two or three a day. Not more than six. It could result in a priapism. You said it was fine to drink with them, too, right? Absolutely. That's That's what they're formulated for. Well, if you're case. flushing out all your regular vitamins, you got to take a multivitamin. Ha <laughs> ha, hell yeah. I'm on call. Oh, oh well. I can't drink you... on, the, on the phone, at least. <laughs> you were talking, you were talking all up in my ear about beds like two minutes ago. Are we live? What? I don't hear music. Are we live? Are we live? I'm I, I'm on the air. Um. Hello. Does anybody world. hear this guy? Am I just talking to myself? I don't know how strong these these this Hello, medication is. Hello, world. <laughs> is yeah. it working? So I've got a little bit of experience with some uh, some mattresses there, Mister Dick the Dick the Rank, uh, Dick the Stank, um. So I've been through multiple mattresses in my day. <clears throat> Me too. All I cut various holes in them different out. sizes. Put mayo in them. Pardon? I make mayo pools. Oh, actually, I've had several inflatable mattresses. You know, you double up the queens right next to each other when you're having a party weekend. Color. And uh, color. Get to, call get to the super king. Give us, give us the. Give oh, us the oh yeah. Tell us yeah, about the you were advising here. foam mattresses. Holy fuck no. Have you ever fucked on a foam mattress? Yeah. There's no tension. There's no rebound. There's no springiness. Yeah, it may be quieter. I love the quiet. But holy shit. I'm athletic, physically fit. And those things wear me out they when I fuck you. on them. You've got nothing to push against. All that foam absorption. Well, we have you the can't spring into a fuck or nothing. You know, I like end up right above the bed is the hammock, all though. over the top the of the woman, and she's like, it's "Come like on, Jim." Huh? You, we have. Pardon? You, have you ever seen the inside of a rat cage? There's like hammocks and weird bubbles and all that. It's, this is just like my little private oh, bed yeah. sleeping area, you know. Sexy fun. Oh yeah. So, so you don't sex on the bed. No, I, I sex, sex in the on air on the top. That's we go like, to like an the... elevated fun time platform. And I go through a lot of towels. 
shit. I go through more towels than I do mattresses. Okay, so what, what is what's your what's your mattress choice then? What would you pick as your uh just the generic uh, whatever the hell Serta, a uh, regular springy. I never heard of type. A generic. Is I that like a German queen brand or something? Because the king size is too large to get in uh, the foyer and the doorways and all that, and the double twins. It's like, what the hell? Why bother? I just do two queen size mattresses, and I've got a custom frame. Because, I mean, you have a bigger uh, open space and you have a little more fun, you know? Hello? Call her. Do you work for a mattress company? I thought a uh, negative. They have offered me um, consulting type bonuses. That caller definitely works for a uh, mattress company. See, this is the problem with like even looking for reviews about mattresses. You try to find out information, and did you did you see the loops that that caller was putting me through? Did you, Diane? You saw those loops? I asked a simple question. I was like, "What? Give me a name of a goddamn mattress." <laughs> see, big mattress. Yeah, big mattress. Net, net. You know what I'm talking about. You're part of my uh, late night crew. Generi Generique? Is that French? Generique? That's it's a French company. I thought it was German. I thought it was like Germ Germanic or something. I thought it was. It's weird. I I had a lot. I guess I had a lot of French drugs in my life. I've always been told, oh, this is just this is Generique. You take this here. Ooh, so good. Uh, we just we just listened to a whole bunch of something. I don't know what that was. Let's listen to some more voicemail. 917-719-5923. Whatever you want. Hi, uh, Nick the Rat. Um, yeah. This is me and Noah of the Abs in a Six Pack, and we had a couple of questions for you. Okay. Uh, question number one. What's the weirdest dream you've ever had? Because I've been having a lot of dreams lately, and they're pretty weird. Uh, question number two comes from Noah. Hey, I know this might be off color, but to be honest, this is the only question I genuinely had today. And that is, what is what's the difference between a chink and a gook? I know they're bad words, but I don't, I'm like a child. I don't know these. I need your, I need your help, Nick. Or, or if you want to consult Zindu. Because I know he might be more knowledgeable about. Speaking of goop, people, uh, do you remember things. remember Gloppy on Candyland? He was like the chocolate swamp guy. Gloppy. Yeah, that was that was the uh, that was the Doctor Free Monster, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, hey, thanks for taking our call, Nick, and we'll uh, we'll let you go. And um, don't do anything I wouldn't do, you know. <laughs> right, that caller might have been calling from uh, Sturgis. Um, but, uh, to, to clarify, I, I did some Google searches cause I wasn't really sure of the etymology of it. I think the first one is, is a, a slang word for a Chinese person. And the second one was a slang word for a Philippine, Korean, or Vietnamese person. Let's see if the next caller has uh, better questions to clear the palate than that. Hey, man, I know it's been a while since you sent me out to the store and shit, but, like, I'm on my way back. I got caught up, but, like, I'm looking for the mayo right now, and, man, I don't know. They got a whole bunch of different kind of mayo. They got fucking John Kerry olive oil mayo. They got John Kerry light mayo. They got hell man's. Sounds fucking satanic to me, but they got Hellman's olive oil mayonnaise dressing. Got Hellman's light mayo. Man, there's too many mayos, man. You sent me out after mayo. You gotta have to specify.
Hello, caller. Uh, hello, this is a. Uh, 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 this is Bobby Go Doofin with uh, uh, Scads and Licksack, and I have a question for you. Question number one: Do you go butt wild? And if so, do you rut when you go butt wild? Do I go buck buck wild? And do I yes, run? Buck wild. Rut. Rut. When rut wild. wild. Do I go rut wild? Yep. Yeah. When you do you rut when you go butt wild? Do I rut do when go I go buck wild? Buck wild. Do I, do I rut when I yes. buck wild? Um, I'm going to have to look yes. this up, too. I hope this is also uh, not uh, racial terms. Let's see. Uh, rucking while going buck wild. Yeah, rut, 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 when you're, rut when you're, you rut when you're buck wild. I, I go. So you might not be able to hear me. I'm eating panna cotta. Rut, rut, rut. Okay, rut, rutting. Yes. That's uh, is that about deer hunting? Rutting season? Well, no, it's more about the deer, like you know, figuring out who gets to uh, lay that deer dong on and, any kind of tender deer flesh. And That's buck rut. is it's buck for. slang for um, uh, a deer. So, and you're thinking way too damn much about this. Do you go butt wild or not? Yeah. And do you ever think about how deer feel about this? You do go butt wild. I can tell it your voice. You are a shark, sir, and handsome to boot. Oh, thank, thank you. you for your questions. Oh. Well, I learned so much over the past few minutes about life and the internet. It looks like I'll never be hosting Jeopardy. Um, let's let's listen to another voicemail. 917-719-5923. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Except for the last guy. He is in the clear. Unless he farts. People still got noses, you know. Um, we should, uh, probably maybe listen to a little bit of music. We got a Benny Martin piano with Hello. How you doing, Nick the Rat? It's me, Stillwater. This isn't Adele? No, this is not Adele. I cannot stress this enough. I don't know why I've been getting this a lot lately, but I am definitely not Adele. Then please hold.
Stillwater. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I I've been playing through Final Fantasy IX again. <laughs> best black mage in there. I like the. Uh, what's, oh, what's the, he is name? hands down the best black mage. Vivi. Uh, Vivi, yeah, it's Italian for life which is perfect when you think about his whole philosophical dilemma throughout the whole game. He's like struggling to figure out if he's really alive and if his life has meaning. And then right before he starts to get kind of a grasp on that, he's dealing with his own mortality. And the answer ultimately when his whole story arc is wrapped up is exactly his namesake is to embrace life. It's a cute little black mage. He's adorable, isn't he? Oh it's, my gosh! Reminds me of a orca. In fact, I'm. I I just got to the part where um, I haven't been making a lot of progress since I've had to work a lot lately. But I'm at the part where um, they're escaping the little village on the airship with all the black mages on there, and then I'm about to fight the third black waltz. And that's where you see that awesome cut scene where the the black waltz like super winged black mage guy attacks the other black mages on this, uh, on this airship. And you see the sorrow in Vivi's face and you're like, Oh no, buddy. And it just hits you right in the field. And that's, that's why this is one of my favorite final fantasies. It is a good one. It is a good one. And, um, I definitely prefer, uh, I do prefer the strange looking creatures over the hyper realistic human type characters that they've started using. Yeah, I would say that it would be because one of the reasons why I like this one and the older ones is that the the characters, whether they're humans or humanoids or creatures or whatever, look best if they're done more like cartoon characters. And they that's what you character. really see in nine. Yeah, or they, they, it's because otherwise, they, you know, with the newer ones, they've been trying to make them hyper realistic. And so it goes into the uncanny valley. Do you know what I also think is the problem? What's that? Do you know the, uh, have you ever seen like, uh, who's that Pokemon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the outline for characters in the, the more realistic looking Final Fantasies are all the same. When you uh, yeah. look at like the <laughs> super cartoony ones, you'd be like, oh, I could tell who that is from the outline of it. Yeah, I- I kind of take it to um, uh, something that my mom always said about mathematics is keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. You know, that's the, the kiss method where you, you want to keep it as simple as possible because that's the best way for our brains to process things quickly, you know. And like, like and you see that in especially like the early like uh, 8 to 16 bit Final Fantasies is you connect with these like little tiny pixels on the screen, but they're so distinct. It's very simple. Like that wizard who really... calls what's his face a spoony bard. Like <laughs> you connect with what's going on there, even though it's the silliest fucking line you've ever heard. <laughs> like, wow, this was written by a Japanese person. Oh, yeah. And I actually really like the writing of it's, it's not necessarily like like some of it is plot based you know like with uh this action leads to this action which causes this action and so you have to do this but there's so much great character like struggle like the the princess in this one she is really struggling with her mom's going crazy and is doing these awful things leadership wise and that's why she's escaping the castle and then you have Steiner who's following her around, trying to keep her safe because he has a knight's duty. And then he's also coming across these atrocities that his own queen is committing. And so there's that whole dilemma. And all of it just plays off. They, the characters and the situations play off of each other so well that it's really like reading a great comic book. Steiner was a chunky boy. He was a... He was a chunky boy. <laughs> and I love that they always made his, like, his, his whenever he's running around, you hear the crank, crank, crank of his armor. <laughs> Dan calls him Sir Rust a lot. I love that one. 
Main character. He was a thief, right? The main character. What? Yeah, was- yeah. He was a thief with the monkey tail. Blatant Dragon Ball Z ripoff, but I'll let it slide because I got so much of the rest of it right. He was, a- he was pretty fun. He was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Six is still my favorite. Six and seven are uh, my favorite. Six my- is. Six could be written out as a novel and then, like, just given a title that isn't Final Fantasy. And it would be a bestseller in less than a month here in America. I guarantee it. Suplex it's such and a fucking trains. cool story. Um, yeah, the ghost train part? Oh, my God. That one hit me right in the feels. It was, it was the opera I don't, house. I don't want to spoil that. I, yeah, the opera house. That was, that was it took fun. took me so many tries to get that stupid fucking song right. <laughs> The whole the whole game was, and then the cap was it Captain oh, Leo. Beautiful. They poisoned the city. That was a. Uh huh. That was a, that was a, it makes you think about war, and you know killing people, and and are there rules in oh, war? Oh, for sure. Should we use magic to slaughter people? And should we combine magic with tech to make it even more destructive? Yeah, and it has it just it just hits you in the field and it makes you think. I'm telling you, these, this, this is a lost era of great JRPGs, because if you go from that to playing, say, Final Fantasy XII, where the, um, the antagonist is someone that you really don't want around at all and has no <laughs> effect on the story whatsoever. Fuck you, Vaughn. Some people You're like it, though. Shit. There's a, there's a fan base I for mean, it. Okay, I will gi- I will give that game this. But uh, it's after not me. I hate played Final Fantasy 13, I beat it just so that I'd have every right to shit all over it in the future. I went back and played uh, Final Fantasy 12, and I'm like, ah, you know, the, the story in this isn't so bad. You know, the, the dialogue isn't great, but at least it's better than absolutely terrible all the time. You know. It, it's, God, but- um, yeah, it's. I'm not a big fan of uh, all the human-looking people. Yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. I like. I again, I liked it when it was cartoony and it was fantastical. It was fun. It was, and it was still like deep and and kind of gritty. It was, and it was like that perfect balance between the two. You know, you still have to deal with a, a tyrant that is committing atrocities and. Uh, people starving on the street and at the same time you're like is that a pink walrus just walking around what if i could go talk to him he doesn't say anything all right whatever you know it's kind of cool did, did you play a uh, final fantasy tactics the original yes i think yes, there's I only, did. well there's a couple of versions i guess but yeah tactics was great well, i played it on the game boy advanced. advanced for the game boy advanced but i don't i don't like i didn't like those ones at any, any oh man that know? was that 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 uh, Traveling on the train in New York City, I was basically on Game Boy Advance all the time. I was playing uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, and uh, there, was, there was like this bubble pop game. Wait, are you actually. talking about like, um, like they later on released it on the Game Boy uh, called The Lion Wars. Was it that one? Oh, wait, no, no, no. Is that played, the one? Was, I... yeah, the Lion Wars was on the PSP, I think. Oh, yeah. Because I played it when it was originally just Final Fantasy Tactics on the PlayStation, PlayStation 1. Yeah, and then there was a, I think there was another, there was a Game Boy Advance version of Final Fantasy Tactics. Yep, yep, it was it was called Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. That shit, yeah. And then they had Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2. Oh, and I, I really like that gameplay style. It's really fun to get into because you kind of have to think about it like you're playing a fucked up version of chess. They should, and like, it is 3D chess when you think about it. They should like remake the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> like, we're just gonna make a really awesome 32 gigabyte system that's got like great internet and all that weird shit. Yeah, and then you just have like just 32 bit and lower games, and then you're good to go. Yeah. Actually, that would be a sweet idea. Some of my favorite games are from that. And the technology and they have today, more... they could they can make it like. They could probably make like a Game Boy Advance that's like that you could like put up your butt or use like spread mayo on on, on some sandwiches. The Steam Deck is oh, like sure. a computer and in your pocket. That's it's too thick. But they could going probably back make to Final Fantasy. Going back to Final Fantasy Tactics, the way that the battles are played out on there 
wouldn't it be fun to do two player to four player battles using that kind of system? Yeah, I, I mean, that would be a great multiplayer game. XCOM. It's a. It'd be fun co op. I would definitely do like story mode there. You have to. Yeah. But they would have to uh, speed it up somehow. They they would have to be uh, spe- specifically made for yeah. uh, co op multiplayer or. Yeah, that that was the but only hey, downside if it, if to if really if all of the FFP games was that each battle could take anywhere from fifteen minutes to like an hour and a half. And like I've I've been on battles in the original one where it's like, ah, oh, damn it, this is just taking fucking forever. But um, like have you have you heard of the plot of the original Final Fantasy Tactics? It's uh, all I remember it was like kingdoms fighting That's yeah it, what they basically did was they um they based the uh main political plot line off of the war of roses but instead they called it the war of lions but they're not trying too hard to hide it you know war of the roses? Same basic is that, plot was where, that a movie um, with uh danny devito I, it, it was a historical thing that happened in england like back in the medieval times really what yeah, the roses. Yeah, and it came out, of, and it was something that happened right after the Hundred Years' War, and um, like a, a a a big ruler died, and then um, it was like their uh, kids fighting each other to see who gets the to sit on the throne, basically. Oh my God! And um, it, it's it was in yeah. 1455, and it lasted 32 years, three weeks, and four yeah. days. <laughs> yeah, isn't that kind of nuts? I didn't take well, and, uh, very much so uh, European like history. Like, yeah. And so the the, uh, the as far as the story of Final Fantasy Tactics, the political backdrop is basically that. It, in in Tactics, uh, it's right happens right after the Fifty Years' War. It finally come to an end, and then it's in the prologue. The main character Ramza and his best buddy Delta are with a cadet squad and you know they're training to be knights and ramza he's a noble born from this great house the other one is a commoner that their family had adopted and then um after doing some missions they meet up with another guy uh i'm blanking out on his name but he, i'm surprised remember those two. Uh, the, del- the and, delta um, one kind of reminds he me was, he was a blonde haired uh, blonde short haired guy but, uh, you know, he was basically from a noble family that was disgraced, uh, and uh, he's trying to build up his family name again. And then as the three of you travel together on the, like, plot line stuff, you realize that uh, this other guy, he's a fucking asshole that literally thinks of commoners as less than human, less than animals. They're barely animals. He's a typical and knight. You hate this, yeah, you hate this villain, like, a fuck ton because he's an asshole about it towards the end and and this is just in the prologue and just the way that they build that up to, and to like this big betrayal i don't want to spoil anything it goes into the next plot line which is very like um like gnostic uh scripture kind of like the secrets of christianity type of parallels as far as the next plot goes and so like the plot lines are fucking cool and when you get the germanic scriptures which is basically like finding the book of judas and then you read through that you're like holy shit this game had balls man wow I just yeah. like I just like you know, Squaresoft had the and... balls to do that, and Square Enix doesn't have the balls to have human-like dialogue anymore. It's a uh, it's it's a hard. It's because they can't do what they have already done. They've already done all that, so they gotta like try to change, and then they I don't know I don't know. Maybe it's no, money they just or gotta get better writers. You can find writers that are great at things like plot points. You can get writers that are great at things like uh, dialogue. It and, seems like you have to steal. You, know, you, you get, just have to steal from history. Oh, Nick the Rat. I'm sure you've heard this one before. Good artists borrow, but great artists steal. Just like Zidane. I said that. Ah, hey, 
Happy go fuck yourself. Love you, Sewer Nick the Rat. Bye. Go play yourself some Final Fantasy there, buddy. Thanks for the call. Uh, it's almost uh, one in, in the sewer. One in the sewer. skeeby dibba doo 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 One in the sewer. It's coming to get you. You know what I don't want to come and get me? Um, a Bigfoot. Mystery Man, and this is Bigfoot Assault. Our story takes place in 1968, December the 19th. There was a small village in northern Wisconsin, very cold and very dark. There was a nearby forest as well, called the Dark Forest. People would go in and never come out. Parents told their children to stay away, stay far, far away from the dark forest. One night over the village, there was a large vessel that ascended right on top of the village from the sky. It was blinking lights and hovering. This must have come from a different dimension. It had no form or shape of any man-made aerial device. It hovered around the town, shrouded in darkness. It was a stealth ship. Everybody on the floor could not see or hear it. It was on the hunt for an earthling. And it knew how to hunt, for it has come here many times before. It knew to take people that were all by themselves so they wouldn't cause any rutkis or any issues or rocks being thrown at them. Guns fired at them. Missiles launched at them. So they took their vessel and they flew it over to the forest where they saw there was an individual all by themselves, a perfect specimen. In the woods, the deep, dark, scary woods of Wisconsin. They would capture this person. It would be an easy capture. They'd be able to study it and release it without anybody knowing. They first hit the being with the sleep ray, which knocked it down. They've never seen a person this big before. They've hit the jackpot with their research. They'll be able to show it to the king of their planet and maybe become kings of other planets because of this find. When they began to drag the individual from the floor into the spaceship, the quantum fusion time crystal began to struggle at the sheer weight and size of this individual. They've never seen this before. This exotic mass that they were dragging into their ship caused some strange interference. It made the visitors quite unnerved. And then when they did get it into the ship, they were even more unnerved, for this was the hairiest humanoid they've ever seen. They had to shave him. They shaved him, it seemed like it took hours. Hours and hours and hours of shaving. Relentless shaving. It almost seems as when they shaved a patch, a new patch grew in. They were not used to this kind of behavior within other previous specimens that they have taken from the surface of this planet in previous attempts to find out more information from the creatures that lived on the surface. They noticed that the creature startled awake it was beginning to shake and breathe heavier and its heart started to go the creature was awakening the alien doctors looked at each other startled none other were ever able to withstand the powers of the sleep ray as quickly as this humanoid creature has have they found the ubermensch of the planet 
Was he the king? They did not know. But they continued to do their experiments of poking and prodding and shaving and learning and tattooing and putting weird objects into the creature. They noticed the nostrils begin to flare. <laughs> And then the creature grabbed one of the aliens with a gigantic hand and caused the alien to explode. Head popped off, hit the ceiling, and bounced around the inside of the vessel. The other scientists were shocked. They stared at each other as they looked at the remains of their friend and colleague and a fellow doctor associate begin to be drained of blood as the creature sucked it out and, and howled at the sky. It then broke the wrist of the restraints off. It was a horrible scene. He grabbed everything in sight and demolished it. He took two scientist aliens and smashed their heads together like little grapes. Ah, oh, it was disgusting, and there was there was alien green goo blood all over the inside of this place. It was it was a horrible, horrible, horrible scene. The captain of the vessel then put out an alert to the rest of the people. It said, Crew, we've accidentally obtained the Bigfoot, and he is coming for all of us, and we will not stop. Dear God, if you have any loved ones at home, please send them a message now. I do not think we're going to make it out of this. The Bigfoot was on a rampage. It tore through the ship, leaving death and destruction in its wake. Bigfoot had a keen sense of smell, and he could smell the bullshit that was revolving around the fusion time crystal quantum engine. And it drew him nearer and nearer. He must destroy it. He knew what he had to do, Bigfoot. He had to kill all these alien commie scum and take down that power core. Finally, the Bigfoot came up to the core of the ship, and he drop-kicked it, causing a massive explosion in the sky. The news the very next day had to explain why there was a gigantic explosion in the sky. They claimed it was just from a bunch of rednecks blowing up a bunch of dangerous Chinese fireworks in the sky. If you come here, heed my word, and do not fuck with Bigfoot. Oh, man. Now I have to look at the definition of redneck now, too. Shit, this is... I'm getting thrown off the internet tonight. Let's um uh, play some music. We'll be right back with Morning Throughout Radio. We got Divinity with Awaken. Damn it, mystery man.
Hey everybody, welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio. Let me put the microphone over here. I've been uh, probably chewing on that motherfucker too much lately, but you know, whatever. It's a, it's a certain zone you have to get it into and a certain angle. Maybe I should get like a headset. Like a fucking headset with a decent mic. So then it's always the same distance from your mouth, so you're not like a... It'd be harder to bump it. I think Art Bell wore a headset one too. Either way, um... That was a that was a pretty groovy song and story and all that good stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to tell you about my uh, my keyboard experience now and and buying one of those and all all the bullshit I had to go through for that one. <clears throat> there was um there was the the um what was that called? Yeah, I had I had a I think it was called a steel case steel series uh, mechanical keyboard for a, a long time. And there was, there was a lot of particulate underneath the keys. So, you know, after like a long time, you're like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pop all the keys off. I'll clean this sucker out properly. Put it all back. Mwah. Good as new. Not on this fucking steel case, steel series, whatever the fuck one it is. The, the, the cap for the space bar was screwed down. Who? Who screws down? You have, you have to like open the whole back of it. So I didn't know this, and I kind of like just broke the the space bar off. So then I was like, oh, fuck. Well, now I need a new uh, I need a new keyboard. And I got this. Uh, I had a backup one. Currently, I got this tiny little Logitech guy. It's Bluetooth. It sucks. Uh, so I got the uh, a bigger Logitech one. It was just because I was like, you know, I want a silent keyboard. I don't want a mechanical keyboard. I want like a, a membrane one. So I got like, I got like, I think it was like the Logitech 540 or some shit or the 740. So it was a wired. I don't want wireless bullshit. And uh, it was, it was a, uh, it was a USB guy. I plugged it in. It was, I was enjoying it. It was like, it was like 60 bucks or some shit. It was expensive for a, a shitty Logitech USB membrane keyboard. But um, you know, I was, it was it was I felt good. I was typing when I played some Dota. It worked fine. And then I was uh, using, um, I was playing a video game, and I wasn't able to press W Shift and Spacebar at the same time. It wasn't registering, which is, which is common for forward, sprint, and jump, which which is which is three things you usually want to do together. So. Um, I, I was like, it's not working. And I was like, fuck. And apparently it's a thing called uh, anti-ghosting or ghost. It's sound like anti-ghosting is the feature where you're allowed to press multiple keys at once. And this keyboard didn't have it. And I was like, fuck. So I returned that shit and key roll over. Yeah. <sighs> so I returned that shit and I'm doing research into what next, um, uh, which next keyboard I should get. So then that was, I'm, I'm looking for beds. I'm looking for keyboards. I went to bed at like four o'clock in the morning last night. But I already told you my bed pick. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you my, my keyboard kick uh, pick uh, in a second. I don't, I don't know if it during that TV commercial thing, you heard uh, there was a, uh, um, somebody typing and talking. It was, uh, what's the name of this person over here? Because I found them on the internet, and they seem to be a, a very good reviewer. They seem to be a little a little tainted by having too much goddamn stuff to review and stuff, and probably getting free stuff from certain places. Maybe I don't know for sure, but um, hold on one second here. Let me let me pull this. Uh, let me just get the name. Um, go over here and pop here. Click and ah. Uh. Switch and click. Switch and click. That's the name of the, uh, it's a very, if you like keyboards and looking at a whole bunch of weird, crazy keyboards and whatever, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very good channel. Uh, good, good reviewer and all that. So I, I was watching tons of their videos and hidden within what I was looking for. I'm just looking for a, like a cheap fucking keyboard that'll let me play games and not look like shit and be kind of quiet. So I'm getting, I'm getting, um, I, I've, I've put the order through for, what is this guy over here? 
It's like a fifty dollar keyboard, so I don't give a fuck about it, which is I like. And it works well. A Techware Phantom 104. I had to get a full size. I need that keypad for playing Final Fantasy 14. Uh yeah, T E C W A R E. I got it with the red caps because the red caps are probably gonna be the, the most quiet. Yeah, quiet is the hardest part. I've been looking for quiet. It's like can't get a goddamn quiet shit. I, I, the keypad is useful, but it's not as cool looking. I, I really like the, what are the, I think it's like a 60 key keyboard. So those things are dope looking. And I think I'm, I'm going to be stealing color combinations from fucking keyboard companies because these little uh, keyboards, they got really awesome color combinations. It's like we're going to pick four awesome colors. All right. Yeah. I don't think the browns are the quietest. The blues make a noise when you click them, and browns are like the they slowly go into the click. They and the reds are supposed to be the fastest. I don't know. Maybe that's all I learned last night. So that's the one I was gonna get. There was also one called the Red Dragon keyboard. I was looking. I was about to buy that one, but then I found the Switch and Click channel. And I did a lot of digging, and I found one of their favorite low-cost picks, and it was that one. I'll let you know how it goes. There's other ones that I want, though, but um, the keyboards are cool. They're cool looking. Uh, I just want to be able to play games and be quiet. Like, I'm using this shitty mouse right now. This uh, Also, I was looking for, like, a silent mouse, and... Uh, this one is, uh, I don't even know what the fuck it is. What is, what is this mouse over here? J-S-C-O, silent mouse. You don't hear it. Cherry MX Red is silent. It's, well, I wonder if I could get that. In. Yeah, I got the Techware Phantom. Yeah, that's the one right there. RGB. Ooh-wee. And you could also grease them up, too. You put, you put, like, some sex wax under the keys. There's a whole bunch of, like, different crazy shit you could do. But, um, you know, 50 bucks. I like, I like a nice, I like, I like the biggest bang for a good price because I know you could go crazy. You get like a fucking $300 keyboard. I, mean, I don't need a fucking $300 keyboard. I need a $300 bed. Okay. Let's, let's mm, mm, eat my keyboard. Tastes like coconut. Let's listen to a voicemail. 917-719-5923. That's how you could call me. <clears throat> hey, Nick. Um, good news. As your um, uh, supposed doctor uh, reviewing your proctology exam. Oh, oh come on. Don't well, um, stop. we no. found your head. <laughs> That's a HIPAA violation right there, I think. 917-719-5923. Yeah, the great yuck. And see, I would like to say that I like your elevator music because I can dance and I can jiggle my balls up and down as I go. But otherwise, I only get to come to my main story here. I am trying to summon the, the shit from oh, dude, the grave. Hold on one second, call. I am going to, to use the This guy's actually on a portable phone. To figure out. Diane, cut that off. Yeah, if you're going to call Nick the Rat Radio, please use a, a, a landline phone, please. Uh, caller, how are you? I'm okay. I just, uh, I'm heading to bed being a lame I just thought I'd call and say, love you, Nick. Love the show. And thank you. Oh, we love you, much. too. Uh, wait, before you go, what kind of bed is it? The bed? Uh, it's a twin bed. And it's I just high enough where I can bump my big old head on it whenever I sit up for the work in the morning. Is it foam? Is it latex? Is it uh, lubed? Is it um, spandex? Has it got mm-hmm. sex wax in it? It, it? it wasn't. Well, I'm sure there's been sex wax from previous uh, occupants, but I've made sure and slathered uh, a good bit of it of my own on there, so 
you know, get that good bacteria in the in the weaves so it doesn't work its way out that easily. You can tell your room by the smell. All right. Well, thanks, caller, and I hope you have a great sleep in your sexy sounding bed mattress bed bed. No. <laughs> thanks, Nick. Night night. Well, that was somebody in the chicky chat. I got to talk to her again. She was a, she was a Queens girl for sure. Through and through. She'd probably like to uh, yell about a lot of stuff. She'd yell about uh, my posture. She'd kick my ass. She'd make me sit up straight. Nick the Rat, sit up straight. Can't read your mind with your slumping like that into the chair. Posture check, everybody. Yes, posture check. Sit up and breathe. Whenever there's like a, a TV show and they, they tell a character on the show to take a breath, you, you know you, you're sitting there doing that shit too. You know that when you're when you hear like a uh, Dr. House saying, OK, now breathe in and breathe out. You, you're doing or they like breathe in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it now. OK, now fart. You do you you, you do exactly what they tell you. Uh, we got people in the chat room slumping harder. All right. Don't slump so hard. You could bend it and it'll break. We got um. We, um, we got to do something over here. What are we doing? We have more advertisements. Let's take an advertisement break. We'll be right back with a little bit more uh, Nick the Rat Radio. We shall return after we sell you some uh, amazing products that we have down here. Billy, for the last time, you have to eat your lunch. Now put it all in your mouth, chew it, and swallow, just like I told your dad to do last night. But wah, I'm sick of your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I think I have malnutrition, and the kids at school are making fun of me because I'm malnutrition. Oh, I've heard this story before. A lot of people have problems feeding their kids properly. So why don't you pick up the new bottle of dark sewer mayonnaise? That's right. We've got all 52 flavors of mayo that you crave. Your kids crave it, too. We could tell because, ha oh, they told us so. So next time your kid's starting to bitch about their plain old peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, slap a slather of dark sewer mayo on top of that and watch his face light up as he drips down his chin with white gooeyness, just like your husband last night. Order now for only $69.99 from Dark Sewer Network. Tell him that Brody sent you. Ha ha. Yeah, I got the Spectre. Or the fan the Phantom one. I got the hundred key phantom. Hello everybody. Are you suffering from mental stress? Possibly your Maybe. soul being sucked from your body and thrown across the universe. Here and there, willy nilly. Are you having difficulties concentrating? Are you having problems in the bathroom? Possibly even the bedroom? Where are your problems? I don't know, but I have the cure for you. It is the Dark Sewer Cure All. Find out more. Now, 917-719-5923. Everybody get some! Let's listen to some music. We'll be right back with a little bit more in Hector Rat Radio. Hope you guys are um, having a fun time. I know it's a uh, it's a late night. That's when that's when the real energy comes out. We're almost at like two in the morning. No, we're not. We're almost at one thirty in the morning. 
That's when you feel uh, when you feel it coming on. I'd put different switches on WASDC controls. Oh, yeah, you could uh, switch around. I didn't even think about that. You know, you'd put on switches on certain keys. Whatever. I don't want. I don't want to be hitting my my certain keys and have them feeling different pressure than other keys. But um, yeah, I think it's. I think this one has the hot spot. What? There's too much goddamn keyboard stuff, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's, it's, there's, and also everybody. Oh, it's it's kind of funny. I was looking for these um, reviews for keyboards for silent keyboards, and if you do this, you will find videos. This is what you'll find. Hundreds of people that are doing uh, click test reviews, and they do not play an audio test. They be like, here's five silent uh, keyboards. There's the Logitech G, who gives a fuck? And then here's the Corsair, ooh, you paid way too much. And then here's the other one. And it's a... Uh, and they don't play the, the, the click noise. It's like, what kind of review is this? You're... It's, it's all fake. Everything is fucking fake. Don't go outside your house. Stay inside and listen to Nick the Rat Radio until you run out of Cheetos. Let's listen to um, a Majav with Fugu Poison Corrali. What? Thank you, Servo.
Can someone explain how ice cream goes from lukewarm to ice cream without nothing in between? This is a really, that's a really good question. Like the, the states in between states, uh, uh, humanity just picks ex like what they see and then like give it a name and like it exists now because the name is there. But the things they don't know about that they don't have names for are just kind of. So is MX Cherry Red different from regular red? Because if I could like pop all the keys off and I, I probably won't do it. I don't fucking. You know, it's weird. This, this Logitech wireless one. I hate wireless. Though. I, hate, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So out Mume are mimicking. Oh, because it is out, it, out, of, out of Moo Red is the. Yeah, they all. Yeah. But I don't know if like MX Cherry Red are quieter than regular red. I don't know. But either way, it was 50 bucks for a keyboard. That'll, that'll be decent. And typing on this Logitech sucks, though. It is pretty quiet, though. It's nice and quiet. All right, so yeah, that was my, my adventures for this. This week was uh, basically... You know, I'm basically uh, shopping for a mattress and shopping for a keyboard. And I, I should have been doing art. I should have been doing art. I'm like way behind on art for the, this this uh, podcast. I, I'm like six six covers behind now. I don't know. I, I got a couple of running. Out. It's it's a uh, art's hard. Damn it. You gotta have to, during your free time, it's, you can't just do art all day. During, during like my relaxing free time, I want, I want, I want to, I want to de-stress. I don't want to think and try to make stuff that looks cool, even though it's a very re rewarding thing. I don't really find doing art to be de-stressful. I find it to be rewarding, but it's not de, de uh, it's not relaxing. Art's weird too, man. Your mind's eye could see things uh, amazingly clear. Like if I said, uh, "Think of like an Olsen twin right now," you'd probably like, "Bam!" It's in my head. Okay, sure. All right, now try to now try to draw that Olsen twin that you see. It's it's gonna. All right, maybe. Okay, let's let's look at something easier. Like think of Bugs Bunny or Snoopy. Something super duper simple. Okay, now now draw that. Draw Snoopy. It's it's gonna look real weird. It's gonna it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna have to look at a reference. Uh, you know, references are, are perfectly fine. But then it's like so now I have to find a reference for the thing, and then you have to think of the idea. It's like first, what what am I what am I going to be drawing? Am I going to be uh, what what am I trying to convey? What is what is what is the artwork that I'm trying to create? So first, you have to think of what you're looking for, and then you have to think about how you're gonna lay it out. And then you have to think about where you're going to steal from. Sort of, not really. But it's a lot more stressful than just reading a book or fucking watching TV, scratching your ass. Suck off the ether. I guess you could do that. You know who probably sucks the fucking ether? It's probably Zindu probably does. You know, let's listen to... I think Zindu has another... Zindu. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Zindu coming to you from the Dark Sewer News Network. All right, we got a couple of good stories here. Let me, let me whip out this one and slap it on the table and show it to your mother and make her moist. Oh, wow. Uh, the Spun.com. It's by Sports Illustrated. Everybody. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. I got to go back further. I got to go back further. There's a different article over here. I got to go. Okay, here it is. It's on Fox News. We're going to go back to that other article in a second here, but. uh. This is on, uh, wait, Fox News, New York Post. I don't know what the fuck. This is originally published on Fox. Okay, who gives a fuck? Eating one hot dog can take 35 minutes off your life, studies suggest. All right. All right, guys. Once I even read this to you, 
you should start to question all science. Because what the fuck is this shit? Okay, researchers released a nutri uh, nutritional index this week aiming to inform guidelines and help Americans achieve their healthier and more environmentally stable diets. Oh, great. Hey, guys, yeah, we're, we're going to have you have an, an environmentally stable diet. Oh, here's a, here's a fucking jug of sugar. Just give that to your kids. Look, there's a little happy face on there. It's juice. It says, it says it's apple juice, and there's only a little bit of added sugar. Don't worry about the diabetes and the fucking... Oh, yeah, oh, you want to give them... Yeah, give them some candy and some chocolate and give them some cereal, which is more sugar. You people make me sick. Okay, let's read the rest of this article here before I puke. Uh, findings include over 5,000 foods in the U.S. diet classified by health burden with environmental impacts. We use the, the results to inform marginal dietary substitutions with, uh, which are realistic and feasible. We find that small targeted food level substitutions can achieve compelling nutrition. What is all this bullshit? Nobody's going to eat your fucking, your fucking broccoli if they could stick a fucking Cheeto in their asshole. Uh, what? The, bu, 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 the food studied ranges from 74 minutes lost to 80 minutes gained per serve. How do you measure this? What? What is there like a human that has like a fucking energy bar over their head that the scientists could see? It's fucking dumb. Let me just skip to the end of this article. I can't read this shit no more. I, I, I'm, I'm going to quit. I can't. Nick, Nick, you better start paying me more and quit. This shit's stupid. You guys are fucking idiots. Uh... Okay. Finally, researchers found that swapping 10% of your daily caloric consumptions from beef and processed meats for fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, and certain seafoods can reap significant benefits. Blah, 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 blah. With teams citing a gain of some 48 minutes per person per day and a 33% <coughs> smaller dietary carbon footprint. They just want you to eat bugs. That's, that's what all this is. It's like, hey. Let's, let's just keep telling people, science, 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 eat a book. It's, it's definitely the lizard people. The lizard fucking aliens are coming here, but don't worry, it's Hindu. I shall destroy them for you and protect you for a price. Don't worry, it'll be cheap. Maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry for that article. Let's go back to the spun over here. Where's that spun article? Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about Joey Chestnut, the world-famous fucking hot dog swallower? I... I don't know. Whenever I watch him swallow his hot dogs with the Nathan's uh, eating hot dog eating contest, it makes me moist because he sticks like five hot dogs in there at once, and I got like six. So you know, he's only, he's almost fully taking me into his mouth and his throat. The thirty seven year old has won the event fourteen times because he's a fucking fucking hot dog swallowing bastard. Is he married to a dude yet? He's definitely yeah. Let's see here. Let's see. So if he's eating all these hot dogs, he's probably going to die next week, right? And that's what they're trying to say. Okay, whatever. Fuck it. Stupid article. Don't even know why I'm reading it. Oh, God. What is, what is, all right, there's no quantum or fusion energy fucking dumbass articles this week so far. So I'm not that upset, but uh, what is this thing? Newsweek, zoo bans woman having an affair with chimpanzee from seeing him. A woman in Belgium has reportedly been banned from visiting the chimpanzees at a local zoo after developing a close bond with one of them, according to a zoo official. Her affair with the primate was preventing him from bonding with the other chimps. How do you fucking bond with a chimp from the other side of the fucking gate? Was she fucking flashing her titties at him or something? Uh... Timmerman's relationship with Cheetah has reportedly consisted of the two waving and blowing kisses to each other through the glass. On the surface, the interaction seems to be harmless, but zoo officials say that their friends have proved detrimental to Cheetah's social status with the other chimpanzees. The other chimpanzees are like, you're, a, you're fucking kissing and waving at that, that whore, that human whore. What about this monkey pussy right here? You don't want to what slice into this Cindy. monkey pussy pie? Oh, no, God. you fuck... You're a waste of a chimpanzee. They probably like fling shit at him. This poor woman, I've, you know, they probably just don't want the woman coming to the fucking zoo anymore. She's probably crazy. She's fucking waving and shit at the chimp for fucking 24 hours straight. Oh, it's this bitch again. She's going to go wave at the fucking monkey. Oh, God. You humans are so fucking weird. Okay, let's uh, skip this article. 
I, f- I feel bad for the the lady who probably she probably has no fucking friends spending her time at the zoo fucking waving at shit. <laughs> oh, here goes another fun one. Space.com. Scientist locate. Here we go. Here's my favorite science word. Likely origin for the dinosaur killing asteroid. The impactor traveled further than previously predicted before colliding with the Earth. Ooh, yeah. Oh, known as the Chicxulubskull impactor, this large object has an estimated width of uh, six miles. You know, if we do find out where exactly this hit, I think they're talking about where it there's came probably from, so much uh, hit, rare so earth, do. like space, fucking minerals and shit in there. Where, is there a map? I want to go find this thing. I mean, maybe I'll dig up some crazy artifacts from uh, whatever. Uh, by looking at the wide time scales of the tube asteroid, the scientists could predict that a six-mile asteroid is likely to come into contact with Earth every once 250 million years. How the fuck do they know that? How the fuck do they know the next time we're going to hit by an asteroid, judging by the last time we were hit by an asteroid? Because we're going through some asteroid belt or some shit. Do you know how small and insignificant stuff flying in space is? The chances of anything happening out here is it's very random. And pretty much a miracle. Like, me landing on this planet was a miracle. I, you know, I was, I was in my spaceship, and I was trying to hook up with a chick, and I was looking at my phone, and I swerved a little bit, and bam, here I am. And now I, I can't get back to fucking Oak Tar, but maybe one day. Anyway, uh, oh, God. Oh, God. We're getting into the fusion and quantum stuff now. Oh, God. All right, let's just talk about this. This I'm just going to read the headline of this. The other one was the lady and a monkey. Apparently, there's also a live science article about sexually frustrated sea snakes fucking trying to have sex with scuba divers. So there you go. Mother Nature just wants to have sex. And then humans oh, just want to stop it from happening. It's, it's really it's kind of sad. Come on, humans. Just let people fuck shit, okay? Just, you're only here for a little while. You want to fuck a monkey or a snake. Or, you know, but that's how you get the coronavirus. So, <laughs> well... Let's see here. What, what's got... This is on Scientific America. Oh, man. My farts smell like fucking burning trash. What, uh, what f- God, quantum mechanics, and the consciousness may have in common? Well, I don't know. I, I don't even want to read this article. I just wanted to read the title of that. So there you go, people. They're combining, they're combining uh, God, your consciousness, two things that we can't explain... And quantum mechanics together. You know, another thing we can't explain. I guess they're just throwing it all in. Uh, what God, your consciousness, quantum mechanics, uh, the G-spot, and the tooth fairy have in common. Also, we did the Easter Bunny, too. Fuck that. Why the fuck not? Also, uh, you know, I, all, uh, oh, God. You know what, everybody? This is Zindu. I'm going to go get myself a swirly and uh, drink a bottle of Jack and probably pass out in my own semen. All right, I'm going to go uh, fuck a monkey now and talk to you guys later. Love you so much. Hope you have a great weekend. Happy Wednesday. Bye. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, we. Oh, wow. <clears throat> All right, so, you know, it's it's fun to do the show and then tell you what the topic is after it's over. So I think the top the topic of today's show was uh, that analysis paralysis and option fatigue are it's basically how the world works. I think uh, I think the the it's just what it is. Uh, oh, nothing's real. They just keep putting things in front of you until you. Until you submit to one of them. I think that's what it is. It's just the the aliens are coming. They're lizards. They want you to eat bugs. And um, they just give you a lot of options. Oh, hey, color. um, Oh, can you lower your... uh, Hey, Hey, Nick. Is this Zindu? Who is this? Well, well, fuck yeah, it's fucking Zindu. I can't... Fucking HR lady won't return my phone calls. You fucking... You know... You fucking said you were going to give me a fucking raise. I've been doing news again. And, like, I ain't seen a fucking dime. What's up with that shit, rat? Well, was in, I, I, okay, look, I let you use the studio, and you come back, and you use it, and then I come back, and the keys are, you, you, I know that's not mayonnaise. Look, man, 
you told me I could fucking use the studio, and I used the fuck out of that bitch. You know what I'm saying? It's not part of your contract. You, okay, look, I, use not well, abuse. You know, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's a fine line, rat. It's a it's a fucking fine line. And you know, I got I got something to say about about analysis paralysis too. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking, I got seven fucking penises, and I you know you can only use like three at one time on the same person. A couple. You know? Yeah. What and what yeah. what you, then you wind up not using well, any of them, right? You just stand there with your dick with your dicks in your hand. You're like what am I where am I yeah. which, which ones do I put where? Well it's hard to get off if you don't have all of them going, you know what I mean? I got yeah, and yeah. You showed me that video once. TikTok is crazy. I got some new ones if you want to see them. Send them on over. Uh Zindu. Yes. You're usually sleeping by now. You 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 say that you you at like midnight you're watching uh, Matlock and then you go to sleep. That's why you never listen to the show. Well, that's just what I fucking tell people so they don't know what I'm really doing. But I'm not gonna tell you what I'm really doing because that's fucking retarded. You're my employer. Speaking of which, give me that fucking money. Why don't you tell me what you're really doing? Maybe I can't. Look, see, the thing is, basically, uh, research, I hired research. you. I could fire you. You're in research for you and your network of scientists. Where, where the fuck are those guys anyway? I mean. Zendu, like, you've been reading, you've been reading news articles and not even knowing what you're reading. And <laughs> you think well, that's yeah, the news? I mean, usually I do headlines. Isn't that, isn't that research? It that's sounds like, like you think so. You but read that's your not- headlines. Did you research into into OnlyFans? We're seeing that in the chat over here. Man, I just use Rush Report. What are you talking about? They tell me everything the man needs me to know that I need to know. What? What do you need to know? Who the president's getting blown by? <laughs> Somebody said he was a, a Wendigo earlier. The president is apparently a Wendigo. So I don't know who blew his windigos. Well, if that's the case, we can just say his fucking name and he'll show up. Where the fuck is that guy anyway? Candyman? Candyman? Candyman. Oh, he can, because he mixes it with love. Makes the world taste really fucking good. If you like cum. I, I, I mean love. I, I prefer... Um... A shot of moistness that came from the dripping mouth of a excited Randy cat. You know, I haven't seen Matt in a while. He, uh, I put this GPS tracker in him for Christmas one time, and then uh, he fucking kept running off. I don't, I don't know where the fucking cat is. Wait, what were we talking about? OnlyFans. They, they, they are going to sell porn again, which means. Um, Sex trafficking, which means the credit card companies will cut off their funding again. I think that was, or there's there's porn on OnlyFans. Go there today. dot com. Well, nobody likes traffic. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh. Traffic sucks. I don't like traffic. Wait, is it is it new? You're not getting a raise, buddy. He man, Matt. I miss Miss. <laughs> yeah. The show's changing. It's like constantly evolving, very slowly. There's a slow evolution of, uh, of, stuff you know there's just stuff and it slowly and you have to be the, the the elevator basically there's like a usually one elevator and a bunch of stuff comes on and gets off as the elevator goes and that's 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 what life is Diane can I get another beer these are good this is IPA all day I've been drinking I've been drinking this shit all day. That's what they told me to do. Uh huh. Looks like we have another phone call coming in. 
Hello. Hello, caller. Hello, Nick the Rat. Hello from Spearfish again. Hey, you're right. Your show is ever evolving, and I, I feel like I speak on behalf of the vast majority of the 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 dark sewer chat room and network. That it's been a hell of a wonderful ride to see how it's evolved. It's great. I think I think some things are getting better and some are getting worse. <laughs> well, that's how I, this is how every artist thinks of themselves. When you when you watch the uh the commentaries on the South Park uh DVDs and shit like that, you'll you'll notice that there's a lot of creators that will look on their past work and be like, "Oh my gosh, that is shit and that Caller? Oh, I think. Hello? You know what they need? They need commentaries on commentaries. That'd be cool. Like every year you could do a commentary on a commentary and be like, oh, look what I just said right there. I can't believe I just said that. And then the next year when you release it again, you could be like, now I know why I said that. I said that because I was the one saying it and I'm now commenting it on the commentary of me commenting on it. And then you could keep doing this every year. And people will always want to know what you have to say because they feel the the feeling of connection. I think the connection feeling is 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 very important. I think in the great unraveling, to become one with another is very important these times. You shouldn't you shouldn't try to discriminate either. You should try to let everybody in. You should try to m- make everything happen, but also you should also try to avoid everybody. Uh, don't go near or around people because most of them, most of them suck. They're mostly big doo-doo caca heads that are working for giant mattress corporations or giant keyboard, uh, accessory corporations. And most, most of them are just trying to sell you garbage. Um, I don't know what's more sleazy, a mattress salesman or a car salesman or a lawyer or a politician or a teacher or a doctor or a, or a, your neighbor or or you or me it's some we we all get a little scumbaggy something it's shit shit just happens shit just happens you know nobody nobody looks back on their past and say that that all worked out perfectly that's exactly what i think i should have done right there most of the time, you don't even know why you did the shit that you did. Sometimes you look back and like, why the fuck did I do that? And you'll never know. Because that you is not even you anymore. That was... That's a whole different universe. That doesn't exist, but it does. And hopefully only you remember that you're the one that did that fucked up shit. Now stop doing it. You. Me. Everybody, you know, just uh, but then, then sometimes you have to you have to kick the shit out of somebody if they're coming after you and trying to like steal or kill other people, or it's, it's uh, I don't know. Do we have any gas blasts? Uh, we're, we're going to probably end the show very soon. You could, uh, come back. You could expect to see this again next Wednesday at 11 PM Eastern standard time. Maybe I'll review another product after I spend hours looking for it. I do that. Some, I get obsessed with something. I'll be like, okay, this, this, I need this. This is what I need. Let me find out as much as I can about it. And then, uh, whoa. Hello? Boy! Miss me, boy! Miss me, boy? Yeah, you miss me, boy! I do. Dad? Is this Dad? I like your podcast, Cocksucker. <laughs> Was that Comic Strip Blocker? Um, oh, I got an email. It's, this is from Mike Riley. Last week, okay, last week I said Mike O'Reilly. I didn't mean to say it. I, didn't, 
I was a little intoxicated. I'm probably going to smoke some more too. But that was, um, um, Mike, Mike Riley is coming out with a book soon. He's got a Kickstarter going. He's almost at the hump. I think there's seven days left. I didn't, uh, I didn't throw my cash in yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a, a good old 33 in there. I'd like to buy his book so I could steal from him. Basically, I think you should probably do the same thing. Go and uh, support Mike Riley, buy his, buy his art, and then steal from, him. steal that shit. And then, you know, you go make a book and sell it, and then other people steal from you. But yeah, we're going to have an interview with him soon. I think he's ready to go for it. We just didn't set something up permanently. It's, um, it's hard out there. Oh, we do have some gas blast here. All right, we got some fucking... <laughs> we're not going to play a flash file. Uh, here's a gas blast. Dr. Sir Mike Crotch. Please stop scuttling from your house to my front stoop to jizz on my newspaper six times. It arouses my fat wife for nasty tea party, biscuit sex, and I'm, and I'm running out of things to tell my dumb kids. God, they are so dumb and annoying. Well, how? Well, make them stop doing that. Tell them to stop being dumb and annoying. That's all you have to do, right? Give them Final Fantasy. There you go. Uh, to beat a Final Fantasy game, it takes about 60 hours. Okay, 60 hours, it's like, it's like three, four days straight. In between that, you have to poop and sleep and... Uh, shower so you know each final fantasy game there's like 20 of them now is going to last at least a month probably maybe a week i don't know how much you could it's just just give your annoying kid final fantasy and they'll fucking you know it'll be they'll be good in no time oh man also uh i guess i should just talk about you know we maybe stretch this two o'clock in the morning we got a um Another game that came, uh, recently updated. This seems to be like, like a lot of remastering of games. There was the remaster of Quake. Because Bethesda was bought by Microsoft. At first, wait, no. ID Software made Quake. Then everybody stole that engine and made, you know, Valve and uh, this, all that shit. What was, what was the fucking Half-Life engine called? They used Hammer. Quake used uh, something else. I forget that. I forget all the mapping shit I used to do, but uh, either way, um, ID Software was bought by Bethesda. Bethesda was bought by Microsoft. Microsoft updated Quake One, and now it's mwah, it's they they added the music in. There's co-op. It's it runs real well. There's a little quality of life updates, a little graphic updates, little small ones, but uh, it's very nice. It's a very nice. Mm -hmm. The new, the new Quake remastered Quake One uh, by by Microsoft and Bethesda was very well done. I had a lot of fun playing it go up for like a couple hours straight, beat a couple of things. Not a clue about HLS. I thought that was a Steam engine. Source, Source Engine, there you go. Yeah, the Source Engine kind of stole from the idea. They didn't steal from it, but they modified it. There was the modification of the uh, the Quake Engine. It's, it's weird. It's like almost like fucking Quake made mods. They made a thing called Action Quake, and then Action Quake kind of spawned off into Counter-Strike, and Counter-Strike kind of made the Source Engine and Half-Life, and it's a weird, it's a weird history of stuff. Things morph and grow, and there's people, and they come together, and, but anyway. I think we had a good, good evening tonight, right? What it was, necrophobes, what are they called? People that stay up late at night? Okay, I gotta, I gotta look this up. Night Owl Thesaurus. Night Owl, because I hate Night Owl. Oh, you're a night owl. 
Fuck you. Cinnamon, cinnamon for night owl. Let's see what we got here. Uh, uh. What the hell? This is this is not cool. The cinnamons for night owl are abandoned, fast and loose. Mom, a uh, lewd player, unconstrained, corrupt, gone bad. Okay, maybe I'm not thinking night owl. Profligate. Profligate. What the fuck's a profligate? Unprincipled, debauched. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I know about debauchery. I didn't know you could be debauched. I'm debauched. I think that's uh, my new favorite word here. This is not what I would think when I would think night owl. All right, someone who likes the night. A single word for people that like to stay up late. Uh, they wrote night owl, but that was just a uh, necrophilia. Necrophilia? A necrophilia? <coughs> necrophiliac? Necrophilia? <coughs> necro hey, hello? Necro hey, Nick. A necro necrophilia? Uh, first. First of all, I have to say I definitely appreciate your your child care advice because that's that's very very important. I mean, they do this um, uh, if the Final uh, Atlanta Fantasy Atlanta area region. Care. They'll do that damn twenty four seven damn uh, takeout. So they abuse the shit out of that. I mean, I wake up in the morning and there's damn sushi that's been sitting on the front porch for fucking eight hours while their dumb asses are sitting there playing a video game and passed out on top nocturnal that's what i was thinking about nocturnal if you're listening to nick the rat right now you are completely nocturnal hello hello do you know what a nocturnal emission is? You perhaps mean narco, like narcoleptic? No, I mean like when like you let go of something at night. Like, like when you let go of something at night, like I just did right there. That I just had a nocturnal emission right there. I was looking for the word nocturnal this whole entire night. I was having a night quandary of uh, lovers of the night. Which would be nocturnal. How did fucking night owl turn into what is what is a cinnamon for nocturnal? Let's look that shit up because this is pissing me off. That they were calling they were calling night owls like whores. Basically, that's what the thesaurus said. Nocturnal thesaurus. Let's see what we get here. Nightly after dark. Night, nighttime, late, night loving. You night loving motherfuckers out there. I can't believe night owl and nocturnal are different. Let me just write nocturnal night owl. Let's just close the show. It's two o'clock in the morning. We'll be back next week. I hope you've all had a uh, uh, decent evening. Evening. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. You know, if YouTube keeps deleting my videos, maybe I should just like release like a DVD of all the videos. Like, do 100? I could do, like, $5 for 100 videos. Like, the first... Well, I don't have one through 100. I just have the audio. I think... I forget when I started doing video. I don't know. Physical podcast releases. That would be pretty cool. Like, if, if uh, No Agenda was, like, selling um, 3,000 fucking MP3s, 
do 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 Cusco. Yes, Nick the Red Vine. I do. Uh, okay, you guys are giving me way too many good ideas. Let's listen to one more song before we get the fuck out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, good night, Earth. Good night, people. Good night, listeners. Good night, America. Good night. Sleep tight. Because who wants a loose ass? Uh, we got RFMD, a Midsummer Night's Escape. Oh, but wait, wait, one more thing. Stop the presses. I saw a lantern fly outside the sewer today. I had a dream about a lantern fly a while ago because I kept reading about it and like, they're coming, they're coming. And today I actually saw one. And I tried to step on it, but that motherfucker... These things are dumb. They're they're like they reminded me of uh, the the big fly bugs from uh, Starship Troopers, but you know it's like it was it was about yay big, and uh, it was very hard to see while I was on the floor. But it flew like an idiot. It was like it crashed into a car. It hit the floor. I tried to step on it. Then there was like a dead pigeon. It kind of threw me off. I screamed, and then the thing flew it hit a car and i was like fuck this thing but they're here and they better not spread because that's disgusting i'm gonna gonna have a i'm gonna do a murder squad for these lantern flies anyway uh we're gonna get out of here midsummer's night escape rfmd There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore, the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, but blessing brings it. I cannot hide what I am. 
I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach. Wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make full show of this till you may do so without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace, but it is impossible you should take true root but by the fair weather that you make yourself. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but I am a plain dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Go kill animals!